What up, homies? We're going on another adventure off to the desert. This time, my friend Craig from the Clark Lab in San Diego State uh, invited me to come help him with some field work for the day. Uh, we're going to try to catch some lizards and try to catch some uh, rattlesnakes, hopefully. <laughs> taking Interstate 8 from San Diego to El Centro. Maybe eat some dinner, crash out, and then in the morning um, we'll go look for some uh, reptiles. Oh yeah, and if you do have fun coming on these adventures with me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know next time I'm going on another trip. So Craig and I are looking for flat tail lizards, which he tells me have the most limited range of any horned lizard out here in the States. So we're going to try to find them here in El Centro. Craig tells me that about 50% of their habitat in California has been converted. And over the last 25 years, a committee of managers and scientists have worked together to monitor these animals. And Craig tells me that despite the time and energy it's taken to understand the lizard's biology, there's not much of an infrastructure to incorporate genomic monitoring in, this, uh, in these populations. And that's where his work comes in. So Craig gets up day after day before sunrise and comes out here to collect some tissue samples. And of course along with that comes a little bit of fun. What is Banded gecko? Oh wow. Look at him just scale that. This banded gecko is not one of the species we're looking for, but it's still fun to look at. So we're just driving and Craig spotted this little baby from the road. You can't tell how small it is until you see <laughs> Craig next to her. That was incredible. One beauty. fun fact, one fun fact, let me hear it. Oh man, uh, these little vipers uh, move in a way that's way different. Let's see if we can get her to scoot. There you go. So that's Whoa. the sidewinding behavior that they're named for. Uh, let's check out some more animals. These are uh, blue uh, uh, death feigning beetles. Death feigning beetles? Yeah. That's an interesting name. Yeah, they do. They'll do kind of an elaborate uh, fake death. They're beautiful. They're covered in that kind of like waxy coating. It's protective. But yeah, so he'll like freeze up <laughs> and just pretend to be dead. Although he's actually doing some just normal beetle stuff. What do we got here? I'm gonna prove to you that this is a horned lizard shit. So the horned lizards eat almost entirely ants. Mm -hmm. It's a big horned lizard. So their scats are made up of ant parts. Whoa. So it just turns to dust. That's insane. Hands. Always. <laughs> Craig has a keen eye to spot animals that I just could not see. Check this one out. Did you notice it before you put the light on it? I sure didn't. He's coming for me. Show people that when they when they get worried about being chased by rattlesnakes. <laughs> That's right. Look at the direction it's going. Away from the. Do you have any clues or any ideas as to uh, why they've developed this weird way of walking? A guy by the name of Joe Mendelson, who does work through the Atlanta Zoo, I believe, has been working with um, engineers to figure out what elements of their locomotion allow them to move so well over sandy substrates. Mm -hmm. And that's thought to be what would have like driven uh, this trait development is you have loose soils that are really challenging to move over. 
sheesh, I learned a lot. But you know what? We hadn't found any lizards yet, and the sun came up, so we had to get to work. Look at that view. Whom's is this? I'm gonna get a couple NC2 shots real quick, and then I'm gonna grab him so he doesn't scamper off, because he looks like he's alert. All right, flat tail horn lizard, number one in the count. Let's go. Flat tailed horned lizard. Beautiful. He's a lovely, lovely male. How do you know he's a male? You can sex phrynosomatid lizards based on uh, behind behind the vent there. There's two enlarged post anal scales, mm. which indicates that he's a male because he's in like his breeding condition too. His his uh, hemipenes are really enlarged. What's that little slit on the ventral side? That's an umbilical artifact. It's where the nutrients came in when it was in its egg. What a cool looking animal. Oh, 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 Let's see if he shimmies in the sand. All right, check it out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to give him an RFID tag. Mm -hmm. Um, so that if we find him again, we know which individual it is. And then we're going to take a little blood sample. All right. Okay. Sure. And like, maybe even wave it a little bit to get some air to move past it. Since it's not real windy. It's fucking stagnant and swampy. Mm-hmm. All right, man, let's knock this out, huh? So let's sanitize the injection spot. Tag is inside. Sanitize. That little hole, bloom shut. Um, and then I'll help express blood out of the tail onto this filter paper. And then I will um, clean up the wound, cauterize it, and we'll send him on his way. Cauterize the end of the tail. And now he's ready to go. I'm not going to no tell your friends you've been abducted. He's got his pit tag. He's given us his little tail sample. And uh, the amount of information we'll be able to glean from his genome will help uh, us understand this animal's biology for a long, long time. Nice. So thank you, little lizard. Ready? And he's gone. And for the next few hours, we kept doing the same thing, finding new lizards, tagging them, getting some metrics and releasing them. And I think we found maybe two, or at least one lizard that was a recapture. Uh, this one right here has some mites. That's what you see, that orange thing. Uh, we just put a little alcohol on it, try to get rid of them, but I don't know if that'll do the trick. Look at them go, they're so adorable. Now, I know it looks like we're just out here having fun, but this is Craig's work. All of these samples are going to help scientists and managers understand the biology of these lizards using genomics, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is the last one we did in the truck because dang it was hot out there. Speaking of heat exhaustion, woo wee! <laughs> we is melting out here, oh my gosh. Soupy. Soupy. It's uh, it's the desert, but for some reason it feels like uh, feels like Chicago. Feels like Chicago, <laughs> yeah. Feels like Chicago in the summer. And that's about it, folks. From here on out, we sort of just packed everything up, went back to the trailer, and I went on my way home. 
Uh, I just want to say thanks to my buddy Craig for taking me on this adventure. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Don't forget. All right, dude. Man. Thanks Take a lot. I appreciate it. Thank Peace you out. Out. All right, we're back on the road.